Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pepperoni pizza cheese drip chips. That's right, everybody agrees that the best part of a pizza are those spots where the cheese is sort of dripped off and caramelized onto the pan and it gets crispy and crusty and incredibly delicious. So I was thinking, why don't we take those cheesy drips and make chips? Which is exactly what I did here. Oh, and by the way, in case you swing that way, these are no carb and gluten free. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by grating a little bit of cheese. And what I like to use is some provolone, as well as some mozzarella. And for this, we definitely want to use the firm low moisture kind. And then last but not least, we'll want some real Parmesan cheese. Some Parmigiano Reggiano, except no substitutes. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this piece of provolone and grate it. And normally I would edit a scene like this, or not even show you the grating. But it's come to my attention that some of you are still buying pre-grated cheese, which is crazy. All right, ungrated cheese is always better quality. And the grated stuff is covered with cellulose, so it doesn't stick together. And we do not want cellulose in this recipe. And in case you're keeping score at home, that took about 30 seconds to grate. And are you trying to tell me you don't have 30 seconds to grate a piece of cheese? All right, times three, that's a minute and a half of work. And as usual, don't be a hero and lose a nail. You're allowed to eat that last little piece. So we are definitely gonna grate that cheese ourselves. And of course, for the Parmesan, we'll use the small side. And then once we have all three cheeses in the bowl, we'll go ahead and give that a toss with our hand so that that finer grated Parmesan is equally coating our provolone and mozzarella. So we will give that a quick but thoughtful toss, at which point it's ready to pan up. And we definitely want to line the pan with something. And for me, the best option is definitely a piece of parchment paper, which is very cheap and very effective. And they sell it right next to the foil and plastic wrap. But if you don't have that or can't get it, one of these silicone baking mats will also work. But I don't think quite as well as the parchment. And then what we'll do is take our three cheese blend, and we will place down one tablespoon or so into some sort of semi-neat circular pile. Although don't stress too much, because as the cheese melts, it will sort of naturally form a circle, or something close to it. And if you want to do a little bit of fine tuning as you go, feel free. All right, if you think you place a little too much down, just take a pinch and add it to one that doesn't look as big. That is just you cooking. And as we spoon this stuff out of the bowl, I kind of like to dig down to the bottom, since the Parmesan tends to settle, and we don't want the last few we scoop to be all Parmesan. So try to keep those cheeses nicely mixed as you do this. And for one of these standard half sheet pans, I think 12 is the perfect size. And then what we'll do once our pan's been cheesed is spoon over a little bit of pizza sauce. All right, maybe like a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And by the way, I should mention before we top this with pepperoni, any and all other pizza toppings will work. So if you want to do a sausage and pepper version or an anchovy and mushroom or whatever, go for it. I mean, you guys are after all the Washington commanders of your flavor enhancers. But I have to say the pepperoni is definitely my favorite, since I think some of that fat that renders out adds to the whole effect here. Speaking of which, adding a slice of pepperoni to the top is our last step. And that's it. This is now ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 12 to 15 minutes, or until it looks and sounds like this. Man, does that look inviting. And I've had no beer yet, and I'm not even hungry. But still, I want to tear right in. But unfortunately, we can't. Right? These are not going to be chip-like until they're cool. Right? When these are still hot, they're flexible. And you could still eat them, and it would be very delicious. And it would taste exactly like that stuff that drips off a of pizza. But if you want these to firm up into a chip that have crispy edges, we must let them cool all the way down to room temp. And it was not easy, but I did. And that's it. These are now ready to bite into. And when you do, what you'll experience is basically two textures. All right, the center is going to be kind of crusty and chewy, but those lacy outside edges are going to have a nice little crispiness to them, and I find that combination absolutely irresistible. Not to mention, it tastes like we're eating a pepperoni pizza. And because of all those little bubbles in the cheese, I love how you can see the light through it, which I'm not sure how well you can see that here. Here, let me go ahead and hold one up against the window so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, check it out. But anyway, we'll go ahead and plate those up, and we will set those out at our party. And then we'll just stand back while our guests enjoy them. After which they will call us things like genius and brilliant. And they will say things like, why didn't I think of this? And it will be right about then when you'll have to decide whether to give me credit or just take all the glory for yourself. 
And I'm fine no matter which way you decide to go. And if you're thinking, what about some kind of dip for these? Well, you know what? I thought of that. But I could not think of anything that would make these better. And they are, as you might imagine, very rich. So I think they're best enjoyed as is. But if I were to serve anything with them, it would be something like some baby arugula that I tossed in a little bit of vinaigrette. And I would top them with that. And then fold them in half, like a little mini pizza in a salad taco. Oh yes, that was very, very tasty. And of course, the fiber and the nutrients in the arugula totally cancels out the fat from the pepperoni and cheese. So we got that going for us, which is nice. But anyway, whether you enjoy these with a little bit of greens, or you eat them as is, either way, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.